Can, can you share, please, the, the YouTube channel? What's that? Can you share with us the YouTube channel, please? Um, it's the same channel, so let me just show you. Can you guys see my screen? So if you go to YouTube, and if you type job skill share, that's the same exact site name. So if you type job skill share, this is the first channel that you see job skill share English because we have other languages too. And uh, that's the main channel. So we, we share some really uh, detailed training on YouTube also. Like for example, the new one is virtualization for help desk. That is exactly what, how you, you guys are learning about Active Directory today. We, are all, we started sharing this whole series of lecture about virtualization for a help desk, which is also important, just like Active Directory. Not as much as Active Directory, but it's still there. You know, people will ask you questions about it. So there's a lot, a lot of cool things that we, we, we have over 936 videos on, on YouTube. So it's like a, on its own wow. a big place for, for training, you know. Uh, and about 38,000 subscribers right now. So we, we do, we are very active on YouTube. Okay, so I think uh, five minutes are gone. And so let's just start with the basic lecture first. And then I'm gonna move on to other things slowly, slowly, and we will, we will get into the hands-on part where we think it's the best time, okay? So okay. all of you, let's just one more time, let's just do a little quick, uh, voice check that can you guys hear me right everybody can hear me yeah. Ten four. okay 10 4 great so here's what we are covering first of all you may ask me what what are we covering today we usually we do provide live training for five days I don't know if you know if you guys know about it we have a full live training and that's a pretty big training so we do five days just like what you guys are taking right now it's like a piece of that five days that we're sharing for free on YouTube right now so that's kind of like in your screen, you guys are seeing that usually our method is that on day one, we start setting up a domain controller, Active Directory, we start teaching about Active Directory. And then we move on to day two, where we basically talk about Active Directory, and then we move on to more group policy things that is connected to Active Directory. So you see, this is actually a real training, and this is a piece of that live training that we're giving it to you guys right here, okay? Awesome. So now, if you ask me, why like why is it important just like you in the beginning jeffrey said that you know because when i i want to get into help desk i want to become a this it person but i feel like there's active directory requirement and it's real basically i am on the site right now jobs uh, sorry indeed.com and you could be let's you could be in orlando or alexander could be somewhere else this is a this is a worldwide uh, uh requirement it doesn't matter i train people in uk i train people in australia all of them have the same requirement because Active Directory is, is just like the core of business these, like, you know, in, in a domain connected environment where, uh, where computers needs to be managed, right? So that's, mm -hmm. where, that's where we Active Directory and you can see clearly, look at the title on the top right here. It says IT helped us, right? And mm -hmm. look at the requirements. A lot of people exchange experience in Active Directory. I can pick any other uh, you know, uh, position right here, and I'm going to highlight it. Of course, I did like a key term searching in here. So some will show, some won't show. But it's, it's in most of these jobs, it's a requirement. People do ask these questions when you go to these interviews. Simple question. They don't, they don't expect you to build an Active Directory. They don't expect you to back up, recover Active Directory. They expect you to work in Active Directory as an entry level. So if I ask any one of you, what kind of calls are we talking about? What kind of tickets are we talking about in a, related to Active Directory? Do you guys know anything? I would say um, mostly password change, user locked out, or adding user or mostly. Yes, perfect. Uh, have you worked on it before though? No, I've done it in school. Okay. And after that, your videos on YouTube, that's Actually, I learned more, a lot more from your videos on YouTube than I did in school. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah. It's a, because in, if, you're, if you are in an environment that is already built, right, no one's going to let you play around too much with stuff like that because mm -hmm. it's, it, is a, it is like a running business, right? Yeah. So people won't let you mess with it 
for like that and and usually when you go to the school for trainings a lot of these trainings don't cover something like that you know yes, the problem with our certification which why we exist and why we are in the business is that there's a gap between a certification and a school learning and in the middle this is where we are like you know that you guys are not teaching something that what other people are asking in interviews right mm -hmm. so that's like ticketing system active directory deployment that's right so when you go to this CompTIA A plus certification or you go to college, college is also like you go to college, you take a course and they say you need to finish a certification. So let's just buy a book. And in the book, they just do like slides and pages of pages mm -hmm. of pages and you get bored out of it because mm -hmm. it's all theory, right? That's right. Which is important for you to learn, but that's where people give up. We are humans and we, when we see something so much in, in, in a slide format and just do radical things and, and you think that this is going to be a technical job, then your mind kind of started telling you to bet, like, you know, this is not good. You know, I'm, I'm not mm. getting this. So you already have that negative feeling about yourself and your confidence goes lower, lower and lower, and then you don't you know, perform well. Right. Yeah. So that is kind of like, if you, if you look at our training, we don't just, we don't do any slides kind of stuff. We will show you some of the things here and there just to make, sense out of it but we don't go too much into slides right we just say that's the job right there and that's what you need so how do you get trained right yes, so so this is where we basically um get into this stuff so now the thing is this uh, if i ask you guys mm -hmm. how many of you know about the difference between a work group connected uh, work group network and a, a domain connected network so when I say work group, what am I talking about? Anybody? Hmm. So, um, so would that be like work group would be more of a at a local level, or in domain would be more of a could be world, worldwide uh, or citywide or mm -hmm. so like that. So, so that the way it works, let me explain to you in a different way. Mm -hmm. Your local computer at your home is managed by only you, right? You buy from somewhere, Best Buy or some company, they give you the laptop, right? That's right. Then you log into that laptop with a username and password. So can I take that laptop being a part of your home? Let's say I'm your brother or I'm whatever you are. Like I'm your brother, let's say. Mm -hmm. And I say that I give me that laptop can I just log in without asking you for username and password? Huh. No. No, right? Not my, no. I cannot log in, right? So you have to give me access by going to that laptop and creating a username and password for me. Yes, sir. And then I will log in. But what if, what if you buy five computers like that? You have to do that simple, same process for five computers, right? That's right. Now, in, in a domain-connected environment, you don't do that, right? You have one server where you could have 1,000 computers connected to that server and then you can create one username and everybody can sign into that, right? Okay. So that is the power of domain-connected environment. And then, of course, that's not just it. You can lock me, you can unlock me, you can change my password, you can delete me, you can take me out of that system. So you see the management is what we use for domain-connected environment. So when we say the domain-connected environment, that's, that's the computer running Active Directory in it and then all the computers gets connected to it so okay. that is what domain controller is about so if i show you in an image it's like basically you guys can see my screen right uh the one with the I, it hands on yeah. Perks and users. Okay. paint yeah. Yeah, yeah i can see yeah i can see yeah, that. paint okay. yeah so let's say this is a server right here and let's say we want to manage um let's say a thousand computers, but here I'm just going to make three computers here, right? If I want to make okay. three computers. So on this server, what do I need on this server? I need active directory installed and yes, active directory is, is part of what it's a part of a server operating system. So who, who would install active directory in reality? Like, is this going to be help this or a system administrator? I should be a system administrator. System administrator, exactly. So a system administrator will come in and on open up server. And then, of course, this is going to be done before you even get the job because companies are already established, right? So yes, you consider me in this training today that I am your system administrator. I got a job assigned that we just opened a new business and Danish needs to be creating a, a domain controller. And then he will be 
we will be hiring you guys today and then you will be managing other users for smaller calls like resetting passwords and managing director directory on its own right now awesome. guys one thing that I will suggest that today, if you guys look at me, I'm not sharing any slides here. That's the reason because I already did that in my first session. So after this training, make sure you guys watch my first session that I did with on a weekend and that I'm actually showing you full slides and that's we talk a lot, right? So I spent mm -hmm. almost 30 minutes of explanation. So that's why we say that in the email that we're not gonna explain too much today. We're gonna get into the real technical stuff. But I still wanna do some of the, some of the explanation today just for you guys so then you guys can at least understand what we are doing today, okay? So, so this is the server. We're going to install what on it and these names are gonna be very important for you in interview. We're going to be install what on this server to make it, to make it a domain controller. Active Directory, right? Active Directory. That's right. And then th through the Active Directory, these machines are on the same network. What are we gonna do? We're gonna, we're gonna basically create an account and we'll call it Help This. And that Help This account will be then used, uh, this, this Help This account then will be used to connect all these machines to what? This server, right? Mm -hmm. That's right. So from this one server, we are going to start managing machines. Now that in your lab, you see that you have this one machine that's called Help Desk. On the bottom, there's a company right there. That company, consider that that's my company, let's say. And I put Active Directory on it, I have staff members, and you are now the Help Desk, and I'm going to let you basically do things to my staff members because now they are looking for uh, issues, they have some issues going on, right? That's how mm -hmm. in reality it works, okay? That's right. Are you guys any do you, uh, any confusion about the 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 Active Directory understanding? If you have anything, just let me know in the on uh, in, in live right now, so we can start answering these questions. Okay. So you guys, good. You guys understood this. I'm good. All right. <clears throat> okay. So now, so basically, what we're gonna do in our lab. This is what I'm gonna basically. I'm gonna show you the the who who is 300 with me. 300 uh, is that you, um, Jeffrey? Yeah. Okay. Oh, 300A. Yeah. 300A. So I'm going to be kind of leading first, and then you can work with me, okay, in this lab, and and others can also watch. But first, let me know. Can you guys see my screen? And I'm on on a DC 300 right now. This machine right here. Can you guys see that? Yeah. Okay, so to use this lab, how you're gonna use it, you're basically going to click on it. Now, the, the bottom part right here, this is the, the abcd.com. You guys can only view it because it's the company. I have access to it, I'm controlling it. And the top one is the one that you guys can work on it. And you guys will be working with me while, I, while I'm showing you in the screen, okay? So, so basically, the first thing is to do what? in this company. This company don't have a domain controller. So we need to create a domain controller, okay? So the first thing we need to do is to go to DC300, and, and you guys are watching me right now, and I'm gonna connect to this machine. Now, you guys are seeing, right, how I am connected to this machine. I click on it. On the top, you see the desktop tab right on the top. I click on that, and then I click on connect. All right, so we're gonna let Robert join in. Robert, if you join in, just turn on your mic and we can, while we are talking, we can also help you out with things, okay? Um, so here, so you guys saw, right, how I went to the lab and I clicked on connect, right? Mm -hmm. And now, if you look at this uh, operating system, can you guys tell me what operating system is this by looking at just the screen? Firefox. What? Well, it says it says Windows Server 2019 at the bottom. Yes, on the bottom. Data, how, data, data center. Yes. How would I how would I know what operating system? Is? Let's say if there's no text on the right side, oh, how would I know? I, I would click on the logo with Windows logo and go go to system. Yeah, I would right click on the Windows logo, right? Mm -hmm. Go to system and then we get the info from there. Okay, so let's go back from here. So I will right click here and then I'm, I'm gonna go to system and here you guys will see that uh, the information about operating system. Now remember, if you guys don't know these basic things, then that we're not teaching this basic thing in this, this uh, session right now, but that is where you, we teach way more stuff in other life training. Of course, we're not gonna be teaching 
uh, something that's out of the Active Directory piece. So please, you have to kind of follow with me in, in some of the things, okay? So, so first you need to make sure that when you install Active Directory in your lab environment or anywhere, you need to, if somebody put this in front of you in, in the technical interview question, you should be able to differentiate between operating system uh, 10, the client operating system, and also server. If you can't do it, then they already know that you, you don't know much about Active Directory or just basic IT uh, you know, skills in, in general, right? That would be kind of like you failing that question if somebody asks. So I like to do these things to kind of also prepare you for interview because that's why you're training, you're taking this training, okay? Yeah. So, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna first open up uh, a server manager. Uh, now, in, in a real-world environment, th this is not so simple where somebody will just go in and open a lab and they will just, you know, uh, create an Active Directory like this. And in a real environment, server administrator, network engineers, IT managers, they get together and then plan things out. They create a domain controller one, domain controller two for, uh, you know, um, if there's an issue with one and then another replication can happen, another one can come up and take over so it's a pretty big thing it's not that simple but in this lab we want to make it simple to get to the active directory part so if somebody if you're doing this in a real world environment yes you have to like at that point you have to do a lot of research to make sure that you have a really good network and active directory environment overall but the process is kind of similar there's not much uh, change in here um, Robert are you there Yes, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear. How are you? All right. So thank you for joining us. Uh, sorry. Um, so can you check your chat? Because if you want to do the live, uh, like the hands-on part, then I'm going to give you also a lab so you can also follow how other people are doing it. We haven't started yet. So okay. uh, check your chat, and I'm going to send you your uh, username is uh, helpdesk300e, and I'm sending it to you right now. So uh, Robert is right here. Yeah, so basically what you do, Robert, you click on that link that I just sent you, put that username and password, and you will see a screen in front of you, and I'll explain it. And when we get to your part, where I'm going to explain how you, are, you will be using it, okay? Okay. All right, so getting back to our domain controller. Now, Robert, just to quickly recap, and for other people, this is a server that I'm on right now, which you are seeing on the screen. So on the server, we have to first install Active Directory. Active Directory is important for... Uh, you know, domain connected environment. Without Active Directory being on this server, we cannot do our training, we cannot do our, we cannot learn our skills and, and that's why you're learning this. So you first need to understand that where this actual Active Directory stuff is coming from. That's the server piece that is we, we're doing right now. Then later on, what happens is that we give you access to a help desk and they start managing it for basic stuff like passwords, resetting accounts and stuff like that, okay? Right. All right. So now you guys can see I'm having a little issue with the black screen. So you guys will uh, kind of like bear with me. Some sometimes our connection can go a little, like it just gets blacked out for no reason, and then we have to reconnect quickly. So the first thing we need to do in this in this server, we need to create a domain uh, in this server. Right now, this server has no meaning to it. This is just an operating system. To make it a powerful machine, to make it one master machine. Now this is the part that we're doing, and this is what system administrator usually do in a company. So we're gonna click on manage and we're going to click on add roles and features. And here we are going to click next, next, and we're going to click next again. And if you guys are looking at my screen, which option should I pick? Just, just to give it a guess or look at it and give it a shot in there. Which option should I use to uh, install Active Directory? The first one, the second one, the second one? The second one is correct. So because second one is the main one, that says Active Directory Domain Services. Now, if you look on the right side, we have some explanation from Microsoft. Active Directory Domain Services ADS stores information about objects on the network and makes inf this information available to users and network administrator. ADDS uses domain controllers to give network users access to permitted resources. So when we talk about permitted resources, what are we talking about here? Um, storage, uh, okay. what is, what other service could there be? Group policy. Yeah, ev everything yeah, yeah, inside everything. this, like, so, 
So for example, if there's a folder and I want to give somebody an access to a specific folder, so I can mm -hmm. by group, I can do this by user, I can do this by many different ways, right? Because I have the ability now, I can do this from this server because everything is controlled from one place, right? Mm -hmm. So I don't have to go to specific or single applications to do things. Now, Active Directory doesn't end here because Active Directory now these days are connected to cloud. And if you guys heard about this term, Azure Active Directory, it's a new thing now, right? So a lot yeah. of companies, this what we're doing, consider this uh, a, a local on-premises business, right? So mm -hmm. we are installing an Active Directory in the business and you, uh, uh, you are the helpless in the business and... I have the clients or staff members working inside that business and they're remoting in, however, but they're using my internal data center, right? Yeah. So now things are going to a little bit more advanced and people are connecting their Active Directory to cloud. And when I say cloud, this is like, let's say Microsoft or some other big companies like Amazon. And then they provide you services, ser servers and everything. And we connect to Active Directory uh, to use their services. And it basically by using like an internet connection, we basically get connected. Okay? That's it. Mm -hmm. Anybody have a question? No question for me. Okay, so now we're gonna add that feature and we're going to click next, next, and here we're going to click next and install. Now, when we do these next, 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 of course you're like, okay, yeah, you went through pretty fast. That's where this, this is a sysadmin skill. So we don't have to worry about this part right now. This is where the system administrator will be doing, I told you guys, you will be investing that time and skills to learn all that to become a sysadmin, which is above help desk, right? You guys are not going straight to sysadmin. You have to do the help desk part first and then go to sysadmin. That's the normal way. I'm not saying nobody can become a sysadmin without uh, you know, passing through the help desk. There are people that did it, but that's just not a normal way. Uh, now, with Active Directory, it will automatically install a few things that is required for a domain. Number one is going to be the group policy and everything like that, but it will also install other services like DNS. Active Directory has to work with its own DNS if it doesn't find any, right? Later so. on, I can assign a different DNS server to it, but in this case, it is going to be using its own DNS on the same server. So for your lab environment, we're going to have to point your machines to this machine to work with the sector directory. Now in the real world environment, the DNS is already done for you by network engineers or sysadmin. So you don't have to do all that part. And no one, no one will be testing you on, you know, hey, show me how to, how to create a DNS server. That's again, sysadmin, how to create a DHCP server. Now, what are they gonna be testing you on? They will ask you, what is DNS? What is DHCP? Just like the terms, what does it do, right? So you should know that these type of things, of course, you should know that uh, you should be able to give the answers in interview, uh, even though you don't work on it. Okay. All right. So while this is installing, any other questions from anyone or any suggestions or anything? No. No. All right, cool. So, and again, to be honest, uh, we work on Active Directory on a regular basis. Um, if I say that if I'm working in an environment in a week, I would probably touch Active Directory like two or three times. And it, it's, mul it's multiple things that we're doing it. We have sometimes a vendor will call us that, uh, sorry, I have this will call us that this vendor is getting started. So we set up their account and there's some other uh, permission needs to be set up. Or maybe we have somebody calling us that their application SSO single sign on is not connected to our Active Directory or the certificate that got expired. So there's a lot of different things that we do on Active Directory, but at the help desk level, you also work on it on a regular basis because these people are like, you know, people, uh, companies hire people left and right. They fire people left and right, right? So when they fire people, what happens then? They will call you the, hey, can you uh, disable that account, right? That's the first thing <laughs> you're doing. And then also you, you get these normal day-to-day uh, -day calls from people that are putting wrong passwords and they lock themselves out. And that's where basically you get calls. So when this information is finished, we're gonna basically promote this server to a domain controller. And we're going to install a new domain controller. Now, when, when you see this option, basically we are going to use a third option, add a new forest. So in Active Directory, you can install, this is a new forest, but some 
some places are pretty big, like Hadi is working in a very big place, so they may have a different tiers of uh, domains or different multiple domains somewhere. So they may be using the first or second option to add their existing domain to another forest. But since in your lab you're doing a fresh domain, we're going to be creating a fresh domain right here. So here we're going to type JSS9. This is like, why, why, how did I pick this name? Any company can pick any name if they own the domain, right? So they can use headquarter like HQ, CEC, whatever they want to name it. You can name your name in there too. It doesn't matter as long as nobody else have that, uh, you know, uh, domain bought out. Okay. So we know we own jobskillshare.org. So we are using JSS9 for our company and .jobskillshare.org is what? That's our own domain, right? Mm -hmm. So we are going to click next here. Now, the next option after this is basically used for administrators to recover Active Directory or something that happens to Active Directory, then we will have this password. So I'm gonna go ahead and quick, quickly give this password. And now after this, this is where I talk about the DNS option that it will need its own DNS and it's gonna create its own DNS automatically. So you don't need to do anything. Now, this is an important part where it says net BIOS, right? So every time you go to a desktop machine for a client and they install a software, can they install a software by themselves? Do they have rights as a user? They shouldn't. They shouldn't, right? Yeah. No. When they double click on it, what should happen then? Should have a, there should be a, a warning or a notification telling them they don't have any right to, yeah. to proceed with the... Yeah, they will, they will get some type of warning. And, and, yeah. and basically when that username, the lab prompt will come up and then in that prompt, this is where you use that NetBIOS name. So you're going to use mm -hmm. JSS9 slash forward slash your help desk account in Active Directory, then password, and then it let you go through. But that's not it. What, what if you are uh, using some uh, admin applications that you want to join it to the domain and you want to do some admin task on that Active Directory, which I'm going to show you later on. And this is where you're going to use this BIOS name too, JSS9 slash help this uh, password. A lot of people like to test these things when you, uh, they'll just put a uh, laptop in front of you. They say, okay, this is our Active Directory domain username and password. This is the application that users is having a, wanting to install. How would you install it for them? So that's where people will get stuck if they don't know, okay? Okay. So we're gonna click next here and move on with this installation. And we're going to click next, next, and install this. Now, Ali, are you there? Yeah, I'm there. Okay, so while this, this takes a little few minutes for it to get installed and, and restart it for the lab, Ali is going to show you a few things because these are pre-built labs that we already have in practice labs. So a, lot of, a lot of our members buy our membership and they get this premium access, which Ali is going to show you right now. And they basically can do a lot of things, but in that labs, our, our domain controllers are already pre-built. So people don't have to create all of this that I'm doing. But Ali is going to show you some skills on a command line. So this way you guys can learn a little bit more about Active Directory while we get back into our domain, okay? So Ali, do you want to go over now, or do you want to? Uh, you want? Yeah, to... Okay, I can go now. Okay. So Ali is gonna take over, and he's going to show you some commands. And in the beginning, if it doesn't make sense to you, don't worry about it. Once you finish the lab on your lab, then it will start making sense to you. Okay. Okay. So I'm gonna click on install. I'm going to. Buddy, I'm gonna. I need to share my screen. Okay. Let me uh, um, give you access. Hold on. Give me one second. All right. Hello, guys. Hello. Hello. All right, Ali, you have, you have the screen now. <clears throat> so guys, let me know when you see my screen. I see it. All right. So here, as you're running on some Active Directory skills, so in the middle, I'm going to show you some commands to you can find some related details. Like here, you can see I have virtual system right now as Dan is teaching you that you have to create the domain controller so I already have the domain controller name PLAB DC01 and I have one of the member PLAB Win10 it is a Windows 10 machine it is right there so the environment is already created we have the domain and all the machine are already joined to the domain so when it comes 
you know when you want to know about the respected domain controller from where you are connected and your credentials are being authenticated. So for doing that to know the domain controller whom you are connected, we have a command that you can use here. Let me open again again. Just simply go to the command prompt to know which domain controller you are already connected. Just type set space L. This is the shortest command you can enter. And here you can see in the output that it is also telling you the folder right now we are logging through the administrator account. So it is defining the path of account you are using and also it provide you the logon server. Because when you have the domain controller, whenever you get logon over your machine and you're providing the domain user account, so your credential get to be authenticated over your domain controller. So this means you are logging on the server, your domain controller. So here against the login server, you got the PLAP EC01. This is our domain controller. And I was listening in the start, Danish told you uh, if you want to know which operating system and that sort of details, or if you want to know that which domain you are connected, there is another command you can use in this command line to get those details, system info. And through this command, you get a lot of details along with the little basics and some more depth detail about the status of your machine right now here you got the domain name can you see here under the page file location yeah and if you guys want to talk make sure unmute yourself uh, because i just unmuted everyone just to make sure things are a little clear hello guys are you seeing yeah i can here? see yeah, yeah i can see right. it here you got the boat you got the domain name and you got the login server. So this command can also be used to you know the domain controller from or connected. And if you so Ali, Ali, uh, let me let me stop you in the middle so I can also explain well, why they would need to know something like you know if you're in a if you're in a domain connected environment, why would you need to know something like this like a command line? Let's suppose you're working with a network engineer, and the, usually network engineers work remotely, right? And they mm -hmm. call you and they say, hey. Uh, tell me what domain or uh, what is your what is the domain that you guys are connected to? So usually you will not be logging into a server to go to Active Directory to find Active Directory and then open it up. How much time that will take you, right? So just by using that one simple command, you are kind of like uh, working with that network engineer pretty quickly, and that's what people expect you because if you're working in it for a service provider, you always have to work with some engineer to fix problems, right? And that's, that's why true. that's why you need to know about these commands. So now the, the environment that Ali is using is pre-built. And that's kind of like domain controller is there, uh, Windows 10 machine is there, 8 machine is there. All this is connected. And in, in my lab, what, what I'm showing you, showing you right now, we're creating this whole environment. So that's why you guys need to know these commands and you will be using it in your lab just in a few minutes, okay? Okay. So here you get the details about the operating system or under the OS name, you get the host name through this command. There are a whole lot of information about your system is being presented when you execute this command. And when you want to know, if you want to know the IP address of the domain controller, because you can see here in the output, it only shows you the domain controller name, the machine name, and if you want to know the IP address of the domain controller, so what you're gonna do? As you know the name, you just need to type in the command, ns lookup space, the machine name of the domain controller, plab dc01, and then press enter. Now this command actually tells you the IP address along with the FQDN, the fully qualified domain name of your domain controller, that is plabdc01.practicelabs.com. This is the FQDN of your domain controller along. It shows you the address on which network address this machine is on. So 
through these three commands, you can know the domain controller, the IP address, you get you know the operating system. You can also check out your memory and further system related things. You can find out the DCP is working. There are a lot more things you can do with the same IP, which is right now not related to our topic. So this is, these three commands are most important and you should need to know when you're working over this position. So Danish, I have another part related to the user and grouping. So let me show you, show this now or just after your domain controlling. Section. Yeah, so basically um, let me now take over. This was just the basic way to find out. I'll take over and then you can do the, um, the one after because my domain controller is getting almost set up right now. So this way we can be in sync. Right. Because your will be a little too advanced then. So go ahead and stop sharing your screen and I'm gonna take over and you guys can let me know when you guys see my screen now. Um, so just a quick question, did you guys get any idea when he was sharing this this uh, from a command line, any idea that like did, it, did that confuses you or anything or you think that's pretty simple that yeah, this is how you find the domain, this is how you find the IP? Pretty straightforward. Pretty straightforward, pretty cool, that's great. So, and, and the the understanding is this that a lot of people when we teach them we always remind them that if you're training for the help desk don't stress yourself by thinking that i want i want to know more advanced stuff because that will never be the case for you right so it is always uh, uh, when we train we always kind of keep reminding people that uh, if they start thinking about oh how do i do that command or how do I do like, let's say 50 user in one shot, how do I do this kind of stuff? So that will not be the case for you, right? So that's what we kind of keep reminding and we want to keep pushing that this, this whole idea of that, try to understand the basic level stuff first and that will get you through the interview pretty nicely. Then later on, you can invest your time into these new learning or advanced learning, right? Yes, sir. So now you guys see my screen, right? Yeah, I do. Okay, so now this is uh, a domain controller machine. But if I if I ask you guys, if I if I show you this machine and I just click on, let's say, I'm gonna go back to my my axis here. Sorry, this is not the right axis. Go back in here. If I show you this machine right now, and I want to test a little bit knowledge uh, skill right here. If I look, at, if I ask you, is how would you know this is a domain connected machine? Can you guys tell me now? If, if I if you guys seeing the screen if you are seeing the screen and then I ask you how would you know that this is a domain connected machine uh, you would go back to the same system and it'll tell you if it's connected to a domain or not yeah kind of sure. right but if somebody wants to like test it right they're gonna put two machines in front of you one would be like oh. this where it says jss slash administrator one will have nothing on it just it will show only administrator so you can you cannot even switch account basically so that's a work group computer that has that's not connected to domain it has nothing to do with the domain so then you can look at this information and say hey okay yeah to to know that it's a it's a domain connected machine you can see if i click on other users look on the bottom right here mm -hmm. Look at the bottom, it says sign into JSS9, right? Yeah. That's that's kind of like tells you right there that this is a domain joined machine. And if I open a different machine, that will not have this information. It will just show you a user. When you click on it, it's a username and a password and you're done, right? Mm -hmm. So now we are gonna log into uh, this machine with the, with the administrator password. And, oops, wrong. Putting the wrong password again. There you go. Okay, so now, first thing as an administrator, if coming back to our scenario that now we need to basically add you to our business, right? We just hired you as a as a help desk, and the first thing that you do, which you won't see, this is the things that they're done before you, right? For you. So what we're gonna do is this. We're gonna go to tools. And where do I click on Active Directory to create a users and uh, you know for this environment? Anybody? Uh, User computers. Okay. Yeah. Good. Where is it though? Active Directory users and computers. Yeah. Users and computers. So now you see this domain 
this machine is more powerful because we just add an Active Directory on it. That's where the group policy is also installed automatically on this. So a lot of things are happening in this machine right now, okay? So if you come here and we open this right now, look at the difference between folders. And I always tell this in my training that if somebody wants to test their, you again, like if they say, okay, what are these folders? Look, do you guys see any difference between these folders? Yeah. Which one is the different folder? Uh, well, they're all different. It's the okay, computer, control. domain so controller. No, but, but you look at the icon. Which one is the different icon? The one with the JS, JS okay, X9. Nine top skill share. Yeah. So, so that's not a folder. The one, the bottom ones I'm talking about. Oh. So that's domain kind of controllers. Domain, yeah, controllers. domain controllers. Yes, yes. So the domain controller is the only different folder. Oh, but okay. I see. You see this this folder with this icon is a default container that comes with Active Directory. So mm -hmm. what this means is this, you cannot apply policies to this default computer, uh, default folder. It's called container, okay? That comes with Active Directory when you install it. So you would be thinking like, okay, what, do you, what policies are you talking about? If I'm, if I, let's say if I have 10,000 machines and I wanna apply something like very, very, very uh, specific, like I don't want people to, uh, I don't want people to set their browser, uh, sorry, set their uh, wallpaper. That's pretty specific, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So I'll, I'll be using group policy type of thing. Now I cannot use group policy if somebody is under this folder, like users, computers, foreign security, blah, blah, blah. That type of folder, it will not work. So what do you do? You right click, you right click on JSS, uh, uh, jobskitcher.org, you go to new, and then you create what? These, the, the one that with the icon is organizational unit, okay? Mm -hmm. So here, a lot of people will create something like staff. So I now create, look, that, that doesn't have that. It, I cannot create the default one, right? I can only create the one with a dot. Okay. So you see, later on, you will find out that, yeah, in group policy, when we talk about it a little bit, uh, then you will find out that that's where you can only apply uh, group policy to the staff member. So what do I, what would I do if I was in, in a business environment? I will not be adding users in users container. I will be actually adding users in staff mm -hmm. group. So that is where I can then apply policy. Okay. 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 So the first uh, now this is where an actual help this training basically starts. Before this, a sysadmin created everything for you, right? Now, as a, as a system administrator, still, I need to let you into my business, right? Mm -hmm. So what do I need to do? I need to create your account. So I can create account three ways. I can right click on staff and I can click on new and I can go to users, right? Mm -hmm. Or I can right click in the white space <laughs> and I can click on new and then create the same thing. Or I can click on the top right here, this little icon you see guys right here create yeah. a new user oh, yeah. so i can click on that and create an, a, an account so here if i create account right now clicked on it and we are going to name it now remember this password i'm going to actually share this with you because you guys will be doing this in a second right now so let's open this notepad and everybody should write this down to yourself like somewhere open your notepad or something and get this password you guys see this password uh password uh this no. is this is zero. Oh, so, oh. Yeah, let, this is a capital P A S S W zero R D and exclamation at dollar. Okay. I'm gonna make it a little bigger for you guys so then you get, everybody can see it pretty clearly. Okay. All right. Can you guys see the password now? Yep. Yeah. All right. So so write this down to, with with yourself because you you will need it in a second right now. Okay. So to create a, a user account, this is a company policy. This is called uh, basically like, you know, actually let me turn this on so you guys can see my pretty face. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't, uh, sometimes like I, when I explain it, I use my hands and I feel like then I'm not training correctly, you know? <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> so here you type like help this. So this username, area that you guys are seeing, and I, I say that help desk, this, it depends on a company naming convention policy. So you will have to talk to who? You will, talk, you will have to talk to the IT manager, or maybe you will need to go to the Active Directory and see what type of names they're using. Because they can be using, let's say, uh, Jeffrey, uh, I, I, don't, I don't see your last name, but let's say J, your last name, right? 
or they could yep. be using first three letters and last three letters and a date of birth, right? Mm -hmm. So it, it depends on the company how they are going to use uh, this naming convention, okay? So okay. In, this, in this training, we're going to use a help desk for you guys. So we're not using different names for you, just one help desk account, okay? So I'm gonna click on next, and this is where the information, the next information is that if you, if you, if you check that first option, the user must change the password and next log on, then what, what are they gonna get? When they type their password, what are they gonna get? They're gonna get a, a, a run in front of them to change the password. Yes, they're just gonna get straight up after, when you give the temporary password first, because you're, you're creating a temporary password right here, right? Mm -hmm. When you create the temporary password first, they're gonna get right away, they're gonna be asked to change their password. That's and right. that's where they need to be putting the password, and we'll talk about password policies later on, okay? So here, I am going to be using this password, which you guys should remember definitely, and you guys will be doing that in a few minutes. And I'm gonna uncheck this box because I don't want you to change this password now, okay? So I'm gonna click next and finish. So when I created your help this account, did you become a help this user? Like, do you have more rights than a user at this point? No. No, why no? Why no, why, why did you say no? Like why, what makes it a normal user? So, Can we mute this? So guys, I'm gonna mute uh, whoever is on the mic. So please unmute yourself when you talk because there's a lot of background noise and this gets recorded. So we wanna make sure that it's a little clean. Uh, um, so Gene, welcome. We're in the middle of the training right now. So we'll have to kind of like watch us for now. Uh, so let me know why did you guys think that this help this account uh, is just a basic user. So I'm going to, I'm going to move a little bit forward here. When I created this account, I didn't add it any permissions to it. So by default, Active Directory will add you as a domain user. Domain user is a normal user who can just log into computers and you control what they can do, right? They don't have any access. They have access to get into the computer, but they don't have uh, administrative access to install something on a computer, okay? So here, if you want to change the access of this person, and I want you guys now to, I wanna give you access so you can add people into this like you know, network, then I'm gonna right click and go to properties. Once I go to properties, I need to click on member off. And this is where you can see that information that I was talking about that you by default become a domain user. And here, what do I need to do? Now, this, this really can go into pretty technical and people can define rules and everything for you, but normally a company, if you're working for it, help us have a lot of rights. And they're kind of like exactly almost similar rights as a sysadmin, but of course, at some systems, sysadmin have more rights. But because you need to do a lot of things in Active Directory, so they will give you domain admin rights or they will limit it per OU. Like you, get, you have certain OU, like I can create five OU staff, uh, New York staff, uh, India staff, or whatever country, and they can then refine it or just kind of specifically give you access to that OU. That can administrator have that have that kind of rights. Okay. So now, if I click on domain admins, I just created this machine. So I just created this machine, and now uh, you know th this user is what is a domain admin. So if you guys can unmute yourself, let me know. Are you guys okay so far? Like everything is making sense? Yes. 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 Okay, awesome. So now this is where uh, we are gonna get into the lab now and we'll move on with other uh, pieces because now what I did, I added you to my company. You are in my company now and I already hired you guys, let's say. The first thing I want you guys to do is to don't join your own machine that I gave you, the laptop, join it to this domain. That's the first task that you guys will need to learn. And people will really, really test you on this one skill. And that's simple skill. Do you know how to join a computer to domain? If you cannot show them that, then they know that you have not worked in IT or you don't know uh, about the domain con uh, connecting environment because that is the first thing we do to connect machines to what? To the domain connected environment, right? So what I want you guys to do is this. 
open up your lab machine and in your lab machine now i think i'm working with somebody uh in 300a who is that is that jeffrey ah uh, yeah that's me okay so jeffrey i'm going to be a little bit taking over in the beginning and you can later on practices i will i'll give you this lab for okay. more hours okay so the first thing we need to do in this lab is to to remember we said that in the lab environment you need to push like you need to uh force your machine to talk to that domain controller that we have created you which you don't you, you don't do this usually in the normal uh, network to do this you need to basically point your network to that domain controller so everybody go into your lab and do this i'm going to basically first find out the ip address of that domain controller so if somebody can tell me how do you find a machine ip address this is too basic okay you guys should know this how do you guys find IP address of the machine? Come on, guys. Is that the for the it's NS lookup? Yeah. Well, NS lookup is one command. That's good, but what is the very common command that a lot of people expect? IP config. IP config. That's it. If you say IP config, nobody's going to ask you anything about the IP. At least, how do you find IP address? Okay. That's mm -hmm. very basic, but it's basic, but it's like the heart of our commands right now. <laughs> it doesn't matter how many years you worked in IT, you're going to need to know this command, and you will be using it probably every day. So you can see right here, what is the domain controller IP address of this machine? The domain is 192.168.10.206. If I ask you, what is this? 192.168.10, what is that? That's the IP address of the, what is it, the domain? No, if I say oh. that, if in an in interview I said, okay, what is 192.168.10? You're going to say that's the network address, okay? Mm, okay? So if you are in a in your home right now and you do IP config, I'm sure you have something like 192.168.1 or .2. Check it in your machine and you'll find out. Mm, yeah. Something like that, right? If it's mm -hmm. something different, 10.1, that's a different class of IP address. This is a different class. Now, the classes, people may ask you a question, but that's something you should learn in that boring type of uh, training, right? When they blow your mind with the classes and this and this and that. Mm -hmm. So the thing is, is that you're going to like see something like this and you say, okay, that's a network address. But what is the right side of it? What is 206 here? That's the... That's the that's the, the machine host. The, machine. the host yeah the yeah so when you say machine you say host that's much better sounding word in it okay okay so on the left you have the network address on the right side you have the host address okay so in in this one address how far can i go i can start from one till two to to fit four yes great so one is usually your router address after that is your kind of like um host addresses but Router can also be changed though. That's a different, um, that's a different networking class stuff. But 254 is your last address, okay? So this is where we need to now, you, you note it down, right? Everybody knows this 206? Yes. Okay, so this is what we need to do. Go to your machine, and you guys know how to get to your machine, right? Look at my screen. I click on it. Sorry, I'm gonna show you the way you guys are seeing it. I'm gonna click on it, help this 300 like this. And on the top, you see desktop right here, right? Mm -hmm. and then you will click on what connect yeah and then here on the right side you see the little internet icon right network mm -hmm. icon you're gonna yeah. right click here and then you click on open network and internet settings so when you click on open network settings we're gonna click on what ethernet right mm -hmm. are you guys all, all of you guys are following us yep okay then you will click on change adapter option and here we are going to right click on ethernet and go to properties now people can say oh there's another quick way to do this and that and that and that that's for you to learn but for, for us to show you something we want to show you how can you get to your networking just normally from a from an operating system right there are many other ways you can get to this part but that's something you can always google and find out some really cool shortcuts right and when you right click here you're going to go to properties and what are we changing here? We're changing the IPv4 side of things, right? 
Oh, they won't let me click on it. What's that? Mine won't let me click on the change adapter options. I click uh, on it, but it doesn't do anything. What is your lab? What is your lab? Uh, um, three, 300D. 300D. Hold on. Let's check what kind of access do you have? 300D. D, right? Yes. All right. Let's see. You're in D right here, so let's check your rights. Oh, right here. Now check it. Sorry okay. about that. You there we go. That's more like it. Okay, good. Awesome. So now, uh, uh, okay. if you see a black screen, just go back and refresh your screen and just go back to it. Same, same, okay. same method, okay? Uh, okay. So now, what are we doing in this lab? And this is how we train in the live training too. We give this access to our members for 30 days, by the way. So then they can, they learn this for almost 30 days. We mess up with their minds for 30 days. Can you imagine that? Not 30 days, <laughs> five days. We do live training and then rest is just kind of like on the phone and everything, right? So here, we're going to type 192, 168, 10. And then we're going to type 206. And also, we also add in the Google DNS just for internet, you know, to make sure there's things going through our DNS. So you have to do this part too. What do we just did right now? We have a domain controller and you have this machine, which is a word group machine. It's not connected to a domain. Domain has no access to this machine right now, right? Mm -hmm. Right. It's a, it's a work group computer. But now we're just connecting these two together. It's still not connected to a domain. This is not a part of connecting to a domain though. This is our lab specific part right here. So don't get confused, okay? When you started working in a company, this is not a part of how to connect a computer to a domain. But once you do this part right now that we did, that's where you need to now do the how to connect a computer to a domain, okay? So, guys, this is where you guys need to learn and never forget this part because this is going to be very important. You're going to click on where to join this computer to domain. Does anybody know? Yes. How? Let, tell me. Uh, go to this PC, right-click on it, and go to show info and properties. Hold on. Maybe computer management? Yeah, computer management. Okay. I'm on a Mac. I'm on a Mac, so my right click is not working right with the. Uh... <laughs> okay, so then if I go to computer management, I don't see anything here. Hold on. So, computer management might not be the option, right? If I go. So system. Type in. If I go to system, where do I go here? Hold on. Let me see. Let's go down all the way. Okay. So if, you, if you go to. Click on system, right click. Yeah, click on start, right click, and hit system. Uh huh. I'm in system. Okay. And then and you want to make this screen larger by going to maximize. All right, let's maximize the screen then. Okay. Uh, rename this PC. Uh, no, that won't do it. That won't do it, right? No. Yeah. So look at this option right here. If I do this, there's there's few options in Windows 10 you guys can do. So watch if I do work. So not work. If I do work and just space. Look, look at the two options right there, guys. Okay. So, um, okay. So now your two options are going to connect to and, and the reason I like to put this work in there is such a shortcut in there that gives you both options, right? So one is the change work group name. And, and the top one is the one access work or school, right? Mm -hmm. Both should work. So if I click on access work, that's a little bit... Kind of like you know, newer way right now, right? Okay. So if I click on connect here, it's gonna ask me. So, uh, guys, whoever is on the mic, can you guys uh mute yourself because there's a lot of uh, noise coming up? Thank you. So, so here's the thing you have two options here. Remember, I told you guys about the Azure Active Directory, that's the new option that is kind of like uh, you know, people are moving towards this 
pretty much a little bit further for, for our training, but that's kind of coming right now for in future. But which one are we going to pick? What are we on? We're on a local Active Directory, right? So we're going to click on local Active Directory here, and what will happen is going to say, uh, type the domain name in here. So remember, what domain that we created? Can, tell, can you tell me? Tell me? JSS9. JSS9, yes. JSS9 dot. And so the, this is where you are going to see that prompt. If you don't get that prompt, then what did you do wrong? You either put the IP address wrong, or your domain con controller is down, or something else is happening in your network that you should be getting this prompt. And remember in the beginning, I told you guys that remember these prompts here. It's going to be very important. And what are you going to be using in the prompt then is not the whole domain name. You're going to be using the NetBIOS name forward slash help this account. And here you're going to be typing that password. So um, who was, who was, who was uh, controlling the 300A? It was a Jeffrey? Yeah. So Jeffrey, can you go ahead and type uh, the password that I, I just gave uh, everybody? If you have it, then just type it. If not, then I can take it. Uh, let's see. Oh. If you don't have it, I can pull up my screen and I can show it to you here. So I have the password, but I might not get on. And I think I put it in the domain uh, machine right here. So this is the password right here, Jeffrey. Yeah, P A S S. P capital capital P. Yeah, capital P A S S W. Zero R D. Dollar sign. Got it. So let me know if you can type this. I just want to see if your keyboard is working with this also. That allowed me to type it in. Oh, it doesn't allow you. Oh, that's weird. Okay. Yeah, no. You're in 300A, right? Yeah. 300A. Let's check you out. So maybe you have the same issue where, oh, limited input. Man, I don't know why this happened. Okay. Now try it. Can you type now? I think you should be able to know. It's not working? No, it's not working. I'm having the same issue on mine as well. Oh, hold on. Okay, try it now, Jeffrey. Sorry. And what's what are you? What lab are you? Um it should be the one that the password that I gave you, three hundred C D. So Jeffrey, I think you should be good now because I just changed. What? It's still doing this. Yeah. Somehow, uh, it's not letting. Okay, let me refresh this. Uh, let's go back to three hundred A. Okay, uh, I think I got it now. You got it now? Yeah, okay. uh, I had to hit, I had to check input. Uh huh. And it let me start typing. Okay. Yeah. So you're on 300A? I am on. Um, okay. So what I will do, Jeffrey, I'll take over and just we'll okay. figure this out later on and see why um, this, um, what is this issue? So it is what? It is uh, explanation at dollar sign, right? Dollar sign, yeah. Okay. So look, guys, what happened there? It, it joined the computer to the domain, right? If you look yeah. at the information, enter this account. Now it says that you join help this from this help this uh, account. You join this computer to the domain. Do, would, what would you like to do this account that you just added? So as a help desk, you're going to always use help this as an administrator, right? So we're going to change this to administrator and we're going to click next and restart this machine. So when you restart this machine, what will happen? If we go back to our domain controller, all the way right here, this is our domain controller. Now can somebody tell me where will I find that machine now on a domain controller? 
Can somebody tell me where, could I, where can I find that machine? In computers. In computers, perfect. So if I look at it, we see right there, help desk 300 is there, right? Mm -hmm. If somebody else is not having issue with keyboard, you guys should be able to join your domain, your computers to this domain. And if, uh, if you can't do it, don't worry about it. I'm gonna let you guys have a few more hours to this lab so you can play around with it, okay? Okay. So don't worry about it. Just right now, for now, we wanna keep on with our training. So that's, that's how you add a computer to the Active Directory. But then after this, this is your computer now. As a help this person, you need to now kind of like create your own admin computer, which you are gonna be tested on as well. People are gonna ask you, what kind of tools do you use to manage other machines uh, from your machine? So do you know anything, any tools like that? So you're gonna say, yes, we use a pretty well-known tool that's called RSAT. And I'm gonna show you what that means right here. So if you go to google.com and you type RSAT, does anybody know what this tool is? No. No, no. So look at the name of this, Remote Server Administration Tool, right? So in a real environment, people are not gonna let you just join, uh, connect to a domain controller, right? That's their main machine, that's their powerful machine. Why would they let somebody just get into the domain controller so they can mess it up, right? They will not let you do that, right? But they're gonna let you install some tools on your machine so then you can manage Active Directory. Got it? So yeah. this RSAT tool is built for that purpose. So you joined your own machine to the, the domain. Now you need to be building your machine like a technical machine. So you're a technician, you should have a te technical machine, right? You, you can't have just a normal user machine where you can go to a browser and do some things and email. You gotta have a machine that can do things to other computers too, right? Right. So that's yes, where you, you're becoming a more technical person now. Now, in terms of Active Directory, you need to get this tool on your machine and you may be tested. And people will ask you, what is RSAT? Simply say, Remote Server Administration Tool. Why do we use it? Oh, yeah, we use it on, uh, on a help this machine to manage Active Directory because in a real environment, we may not have uh, access to the direct server. Got it? Good. So now, if I go back to the, the machine that we just joined on, 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 the, on this, uh, you know, uh, domain if I open it up now and I go here and let's say for example I want to check sign out from this machine because we just joined this machine to a domain if I sign out I want to show you something still signing out right now and sometimes it gets stuck in here let's see So, so you guys see right here, um, I'm just kind of like troubleshooting some basic things here. Look, look what happened here now. If I do all control delete, can now, can you guys now tell me, is this a domain connected machine or is a work group machine? Domain. Okay. I, I, I know by putting other user and now I see sign in as a domain, right? Mm -hmm. So now I'm going to log in with this, with this username and password. So I'm going to log in with the help this machine, uh, sorry, help this password. So the one, the password that we created for this is, oh. okay guys, now if I forget this password, where do I fix it? This is actually a good scenario, I forgot. How do I fix this? I'm on a hub this machine, where do I fix mm -hmm. it? Where do I fix this account? You gotta go back to the main controller. Ah, perfect, how do I reset the password? Uh, you click on the user, yeah, you, right you there. Right click on the user and you yeah. reset. You see, you you just saw a real world scenario, right? I forgot the password. I didn't know how to fix it from the from the user. I can't fix it, right? Where do I go? I gotta go to the source where I created this account, right? Yes, sir. Okay, so I can reset this password and I'm gonna do it right now. Mm -hmm. And because I think we were using that other password for this, that's why I couldn't do it. But I'm gonna reset to something simple so then I can move forward and Jeffrey, I'll later on change it for you, okay? okay? But here, another thing I want you guys to learn now. If I want to create a new user and I don't wanna waste my time, is there ability in this uh, Active Directory that can I do that quickly? If I don't want to, uh, there's let's say 10 groups assigned to this uh, username, can I do that? 
Yes, right? I can right click and I can copy, right? I can copy here, so this will save me by not putting all the groups again. What if I have like 25 groups that I didn't, and this has a script on it, this has some timing limitations on it, so many different things that have been done to this account. I can just right click copy and that saves me what? Time, right? Mm -hmm. So let's say for example here, I'm gonna use another account, Hadi. And Hadi, let's say, is another technician. And I wanna add it to this company and I'm gonna use put a username and password. So how would I check if Hadi is a domain admin or not? Can can not, can you guys tell me now? If if I if I added Hadi here, and I want to see if Hadi is a domain admin because I just did a copy, how can I confirm it? Can anyone tell me? You gotta go to what you call it. Before we right click and we want where properties right. So if, if I had it, how do you right now, where do I confirm that? I go to properties, mm -hmm. I go to member off, right? Yeah, that's right, yeah. Member. And now you see, I didn't add the domain admin, but it got copied over, right? That's right. If I wanna check it the other way, I can go to users here, and wherever this group is, this is a domain admin group, right? I can do, I can check it by that too. I can I can move this forward this way, and the domain admin, sorry, not enterprise admin, domain admin, so I'm looking for domain admin here. So where do I check Hadi or myself? Members, right? Members. And here you go, Hadi's right there. So this could be a, a call to you, a ticketing call. Can you remove Hadi from certain groups? So you as a technician needs to come here and quickly remove him, right? Mm -hmm. that's, right. So that's a ticket actually. That's, that's like a normal call for you. Call done, you finish your ticket, and that's it, great job, right? You did, you did something to them. And right? then you would, just, you, would you, what, you would just click on remove? Yeah, you would just that's click it. You just in, okay. That's it. Okay. Isn't that isn't that pretty easy? That's a quick job. <laughs> what if you have this job and just like doing that only? <laughs> I'd be working overtime every day. <laughs> <laughs> but it would be man, it would be boring, right? Like you'd be doing the same thing. Yeah, that's right. That's right. You you want a little bit more challenge in your job, you know? That's right. So so yeah, and other way to find now. Let's say for example, you forgot this, the Active Directory is not this small. This is a pretty big Active Directory, ten thousand people. Of course, you're not gonna look around people, right? How do you search? You're gonna click on this little icon right here on the right side, and then you will change the user to entire directory. I like to do that because you may have multiple domains, right? So then I'm gonna come here. I'm just gonna type Hadi, and you see Hadi's right there, right? So you can also re right click here and do the same things. Like you can add, you can uh, reset the password for Hadi. You can uh, go to the properties for Hadi. You can move Hadi from one group to another. But if I wanna, uh, what will be the, another call related to this in this area right now? What will be another call not resetting? Let's say if somebody got locked out, how do you fix that issue, right? You're gonna, you're gonna go to the user and then you're gonna right click on that user and go to properties. Remember this one piece in interview. If somebody asks you, how do you unlock a person? How do you change the data for that person? What do you do? Right click, go to properties. As soon as mm -hmm. you see that, you pass your interview because everybody, everything is in properties, right? That's right. So you go into the properties and you click on account, that's where you see the unlock option. You see that's not in the right right click and it's not in that few menu, right? Few, few options. You have to get mm -hmm. into the properties Click on account, then you will see this option, right? Mm -hmm. That's right. And we unlock him, and then that's it. Now, if I want to uh, log into this machine, because Hadi is a help desk now. So let's say we just say, okay, Hadi can also log into this machine. Can he log in? Yes, because he's a part of the domain, right? That's right. So we're going to see Hadi. Hey, now, Hadi. Hadi. And... There you go, we sign in and look, Hadi just signed it to a machine that was not connected to, like first, this was just a normal laptop. He connected to the domain and he got a profile, right? That's oh, right. So that's where the control of domain controller and Active Directory really comes in handy because now I control Hadi right here. But he's an admin right here. So he's gonna log into this machine and he's gonna do what? Now he has the ability to install that RSAT tool, right? And then he can install it and then he will have access just like a domain controller, but not on a main server, just connecting to that domain controller. So, so basically what we will do right now, I'm going to show you another thing about for this because we want to save our time, not by downloading everything again. So I already downloaded the RSAT. So basically you're going to go here and you're going to type RSAT Windows 10 download, right? 
you're gonna go to download like this and then you will install this uh, the first link right here download remote server administrator tool and here you will download it and basically you will see the same thing that you're seeing in this machine right now that I'm showing you guys in the download option and you guys see this right um, no not this sorry I, uh, I think I didn't do it correctly uh, let's do it again sometimes I feel like I did it and I did it somewhere else and now it's gone so <laughs> So let's do it. <laughs> Any questions while I do this? This may take a few seconds. No. Okay. Is everything clear like this? Everything when I talk about things, does it make sense? Yes. Yeah, it does. It does. Okay, awesome. Pretty simple stuff, but it's just, you know, you got to do it once and then you're good, you know. So now here we're going to come here and we are we're doing what to hadi's machine he's a help desk and he's now beefing up his machine he's making this machine more a technical machine it's not a normal user right he's a he's a technician so he has to do what he has to install this piece to make it a, a, a technical machine so he's going to do r set down windows 10 download okay and we're going to download this now so here we're going to download the first option. Now sometimes in some of the newer uh, version of Windows 10, you know, this is actually included inside the operating system. You're going to go to your program and features and you can actually uh, check mark and it will, it will be there for you. But in, uh, in our case, we're using an enterprise version, so that doesn't have it. So we're going to, we're going to install a 64-bit operating system. So now this training is not about what, what is 32-bit, 64, but know that every new uh, system that is getting built or like they're they're coming out with is a 64 bit they don't use 32 bit anymore okay mm -hmm. so we're gonna click next and oh sorry that was a wrong language i don't want to install i think that was thai or something i'm sure i don't understand thai mm -hmm. so you're gonna make sure Uh, no, this is not right. We're not in the right spot right here because I don't know what TH means. That's just that's a different language, I believe. So you got to make sure here we download the right one. Now, I did it correctly when I was before creating this lab. So you have to look around a little bit, okay? So while I'm doing this, um, Ali, are you there? Yeah, there. So I think let's let's uh, you you can take over and show them the user account because they already learned about how to create the username. So I will try to figure this out because I need to look for the language now. So this will save us time. So why don't you take over, and um, I'll I'll continue this part. Okay. Sure. So Ali is going to now show you his part of some of the commands that you can use that you learned it through GUI, right? You learned some things about GUI, like you can do things in the actual directory. And now he's going to move into his site in the command line so you can also understand something in the command line, okay? So uh, let me stop sharing here, Ali. All right, just give me the control. There you go. <clears throat> Hey guys, can you watch my screen? Yes. Yes. All right. So as Danish discussed you about the user account groups, so we have a different way as you have seen. It's the GUI way, you know, through the graphical means, just open the windows, clicks. But right now we are moving towards the command line, how you can create the group, how you can create the user, then assign particular user to the particular group. Let me show you some graphical things here so you can better understand. Here, if we go to the Active Directory user and computer, here you have OUs as Danish already elaborated you. And here, under the user section, if you click it, you're gonna find accounts that may be used by the members of any domain, of your domain and they can easily log on over your domain controller. So if in an active directory, we are a kind of thing called group policy. If we want to restrict, as Danish already discussed with you, we want to restrict something, if we want to create some a frame for the user so they cannot go outside that frame, like 
uh, we control the wallpaper, we, we can control the desktop icon and their access. So for such things, we have to create the group for department-wide because if we are applying policy, so we, mean, we need to consider their department, their role, their kind of operation. So for such things, we create groups and then divide the user on each group. And after all this arrangement, we can apply the policy as per the group. So here I have some users and some groups. So if you want to create this by using the GUI method, you just go to the icon here on the top. This for adding the group, you're gonna click on this and there is a simple boxes appear and you just need to fill the information there. And if you want to add user, this will be same. You just right click and go to simply new. And there you got the user option selected and they're kind of empty box and where you provide information that is required. But how you can do this thing by using the GUI method, the, the command line method. So here, the utility that offered by the Windows Server is the Windows PowerShell. And this is designed to do some administrative kind of stuff by using the command line. So we're gonna launch it. And here, it is open on your screen. And we have the access right now, the administrator access. So first, I'm gonna show you the command through. You can make the user by just simple one command, but it has a long syntax, but it is only one at the moment. You don't need to do some more clicks and just go on different windows, different uh, consoles of user account. So what we're gonna do, new dash 80, 80 is your active directory user that you are creating, new dash 80 user, now dash name here we are specifying the name so name is space and i'm using the same example right now the mike dot mills that would be the username space now we need to identify need to implement that, that what would be the display name so dash display name and that will be mic space miss and where it comes close space then if you go on the GUI method you will realize that all these things are provided in a kind of box thing and where you type all this information but when we are going through the command line we have to specify each thing separately in a single command. So the given name would be Mike and space dash surname because we are making the user. And let's say you are working in a professional environment where you have to, you have the similar names of many employees, many users. So you need to identify the surname that will differ one user to another which have the same name. So that surname miss space path. Now in the path, you're defining the container where this user go and here you're gonna define the domain. So simple commands, if you just understand, so these are simple OU, the organizational unit will be engineering right now. You're using this OU. Then comma. OU engineering is a part of EMEA. This is already created OUs in this virtual environment. And then we're going to specify the domain. So the keyword will be DC domain controller equals practice lab. This is our domain name, then comma DC and the remaining part com practice labs.com is the full name and we are defining it by separating commas and dc keyword so this is the whole command you need to run and then the user will be created oops here is something missing 
because in the command line, you need to be more accurate and correct while typing. Just check this command. New dash add user space dash name Mike miss space dash display. So we just forgot to write the S after the I. And this could be also like you're working in a company and what if you are working for a company that has this type of request all the time, like you're adding users for this company, right? They may be a, some type of provider. You get like a 50 people in a, in a week that you, you need to be working on. Then of course you need to have some kind of command skills, right? You can't be doing this on, on GUI. Um, that's going to be great. Copy this whole syntax and just change the name in between so it will be so fast. Because each time you don't mean to type the whole command, you just copy the syntax and just change the name. So it will be so fast by as compared to the GUI method. And here I just correct the spelling and it is created. No successful message we got. It means that command is perfectly executed. Now we can check it from the user account that it is created. We go there, user and computer, and there you can see mic.miss is created. Now we need to set some more detail, like we have to assign a password to this account, and we have another command to set the password for the user account. So what it would be set dash. Can you guys see my screen? Yes. Hello. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did. Yes. 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 All right, so set dash 80 account. All right, password space space mic dot mills. We need to specify the specific account where we're assigning. We want to set the password so. Here it is asking for the current password and we're gonna go for the same password. Then the desired password will be P A double S. This is the standard password used by this practice lab. So we are going to this password. Okay. Passwords are different. Password, then the desired password, and again, okay. P A double S W O R D, the current password. Now I'm Are changing sure? my yeah. password because it is just erring somehow, so I'm changing the new password and that would be JSS one and JSS one. But you know, sometimes the, in domain, you may have like a strong password policy set. So maybe there is a strong policy. So I, could yeah, go. this might be the reason or, and also the mic dot miss was a disabled account, right? When you created this, so another yeah, after setting the password, I'm going to enable this account. Okay. All right. So I'm changing the password. That would be universal U capital N I V E R S A L three to one dollar. Enter. Then U N I V E R S A L three to one dollar. Don't know why it is not working. Correct. 
just change the thing dot mass p a double s w dot password and p a double s w r d one one p a double s w r d I don't know why it had maybe problem with the backend and some policies right now. So we can move forward to enable the account because there are some kind of restricted policy that already set by the domain controller. And if we go there and just change this, so it will take some time and it's not related to your stuff. So this command should be used to set the password. Now, after configuring the password, you must enable the account with the command enable dash ad account space mic dot miss enter and maybe there's a problem with yeah i think maybe they're they're probably not letting you do that so guys if you guys are using practice lab that's a pre-built environment so they control the domain controller right because this lab is not designed for what ali is doing it's designed for other things like on the left side you see the step one step two information so that's designed for that the lab that you guys are working with me is the one that we create our own like a fresh domain controller right so yeah, there could be some restrictions that what what why Ali is having issues right here. So Ali, um, I think I will take over from here. So then we can. Move yes, on. you can because right now these are not supporting this. Uh, yeah, and these are the commands you can always search and use it on the normal domain if you create your own lab environment or you use our lab environment that we specifically we use here. Then okay. that could be a different story here. Okay. All right, so moving on with this, but the main, the main thing is not to, if this command is working or not, the main thing is that now you know there are other ways for you to learn this thing, right? You can always right. go online and find these commands. And now you know if somebody asks you a question, is there a second method? Is there a second alternative? Can you guys do this from other way? Like if somebody say, okay, this is a GUI. Is there any other way? You will say, yeah, through PowerShell right that's something you need to remember that's important uh -huh. learning powershell powershell is a whole different story that you can always invest your time into that and then become a better uh, uh you know more technical person and that's something i would recommend if you want to become a sysadmin in the future then go towards that route okay all right so now if i share you my screen ali can you stop sharing all right uh all right, guys, so we're going to be ending it soon, but uh, we are almost uh, there, okay? So now if we go back to our lab, I want to show you something. Remember, we installed that RSAT, right? So when you install RSAT on a computer like this, like a help desk computer, what happened here? You see, if I go to control panel here, I can type administrative tools. And when you when you install that RSAT, what do you see on your computer now? As on a help desk, you see Windows administrative tools. And this is the tools that I was talking about. That now you're not on the server, but by using these tools, you can actually connect to that server, right? Mm -hmm. So now if I click on Active Directory Users and Computers, so Hadi can just open that up and see now you have the Active Directory right from your computer. So did you guys get this why RSAT is important now? That's right. So that's why RSAT is important because you're going to be always logging in in the morning. You go, you go to the work, you get your coffee, you sit in front of your computer. You don't log into a domain controller. You log into your machine through RSAT. You start getting calls. Now you got a call from somebody, Emma, whoever this person is, John, whatever. You got okay. a call and then normal process is what? You get into Active Directory. You right click, you get the password, you create a new account. So just by looking at the screen, and if you guys are training yourself, now of course you gotta do your self training too, right? Now here's, here's the thing, you will need to come up with your own tickets. Meaning think about it, how many people can call you about password? How many people can call you about new users, right? How many mm -hmm. people can call you about, I just got married, my last name needs to be changed. So simple thing, right? You gotta go to that user, and then you need to do what? Right click and do what? 
properties, right? You're yes. Gonna to, you're going to go to properties and then you're going to click on that person name, title, uh -huh. and you change the name right there, right? Yes, sir. So these are very common things, but it's so much in Active Directory that you're going to get like 10, 15 calls like in a week just by doing this stuff, right? So that is how you kind of just normally manage Active Directory. But here's the other thing that comes in play. Active Directory itself is not something, uh, like that's not it. Like there's more to it. Now you see Active Directory works with group policy. Remember in the beginning I talked about a little bit about group policy. Now why would you need group policy for Active Directory learning? Can, can anybody tell me? Printers, uh, network shares. Perfect. But that's network and printer shares. That's other technical things, right? But why would you need it for Active Directory? Hmm. So if I, let's say, open a group policy right now, first of all, in the same administrator tools, you get access to group policy too, right? right. So now as Hadi, I can open group policy and I open this up. Like why I say group policy is a total different training. I mean, we can spend another three hours on group policy and group policy, you will get a job, uh, like say 80K job, just by doing group policy stuff, right? The reason for that is that group policy is being used for, by who? A sysadmin, right? Who's going there, who's defining these policies, who's working these policies, deploying things, and he has to work really nicely in this and make sure that group policy is pretty nice for it to work. But for you as a, as a help desk, you also need to know a little bit about group policy because there are, there are questions that people can ask you. What if I ask Jeffrey that, Jeffrey, I'm calling you, let's say I'm an I'm a employee. I call you Jeffrey that, how many characters can I use in my password? Can you answer that through Active Directory? No, right? You can't. You have to use either a command or you gotta go to group policy, right? So how would you go find that out? You're gonna open the domain and sim similar process, right? I'm gonna go to JSS here, and in JSS, I am gonna basically open my default domain policy. That is the policy that gets default, like when you install the Active Directory, that is the policy that gets default, that's a, like the, the first policy that gets applied for everybody, right? Now, in future, you can create more policies if you want to, and that's why I say that you can even land a job by just doing group policy stuff, but that's pretty much future. So how do you check this thing? How do you find a group policy information? You need to right click on group policy and edit, right? So coming back to Jeffrey question, can you answer that question if somebody asks you, how many password characters do we need to use? Because I'm typing ABCD. I'm typing ABCD as my password, it's not working. Where would you give that answer to a person that, okay, ABCD is not the characters that we have here. You need to put seven characters or above, right? You cannot give this answer without knowing, right? Yeah. So that's where you need to understand. You need to come to group policy, go to the policy, computer policies, and click on Windows settings, and in Windows settings, then go to where? Security settings, right? Yeah. You're gonna go to security setting, and now you're gonna click on what? Account policies. And that's where your password policy is set, right? So if I click on, double click on password policy, now on the right side, can you guys tell me if I put six characters password, can that work? No. Why? Uh, it says minimum is seven characters. Minimum is seven. And you know, people are gonna call you. They're new to your company. They're gonna come and they're gonna spend like say 30 minutes, right? And they'll lock themselves out like three times and they'll get pissed off. And then they'll call you that I tried every strong password in the world but it's not working because they're always putting six characters. It doesn't matter how strong it is, it's not gonna work, right? Mm -hmm. So this is a question that people can definitely ask, uh, call you, but you don't wanna be also going to office and spending another 30 minutes with them trying it at six characters and then you tell them that, hey, it was seven characters. You're not gonna look good, right? That's true. <laughs> yeah, so that's where you need to come here and understand these basic policies which I'm showing to you guys. Now, if somebody uh, goes out there and they start using their password in front of you and they start putting wrong password, what are you gonna tell them by knowing lockout policy? Like if, if you already know about the lockout policy, what are you gonna tell them? If I say after, after six tries, this person needs to get locked out. So let's find that right now, let's just do that. Let's do five 
and we're going to apply and we're going to say, okay. So if Hadi is there, he's an employee now, and he's typing his password. One time he's did it wrong, two times he did it wrong. If he did it wrong five times, would you tell him that after five times you're going to get locked out, right? Yeah. So it's something that you should know. So he gets locked out. Then what happens? Then you need to know how to unlock him. And how do you unlock that person? We just, we just did that. If somebody locked themselves out, how do you unlock that person? Oh, uh, right click on user. Yeah. So you're going to go to what? We're group policy, right? No. You, sorry. No, sorry. You're going to go to active directory, right? From right. your machine. Yeah. You're going to go to your machine and do what? Right click. Right click on properties. Uh, properties account. Account, uh, account. And then unlock, unlock account. Unlock it, right? Yep. Now, if let's say you have 300 users um, and somebody call you in the middle, like, okay, how many days are remaining in my password to expire? Of course, there are going to be people like that too, right? That, Hey, I want to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to some vacation and I want to make sure that I have access in my vacation. So I want to make sure that I change my password now before I get issues. How would you give them that answer? From group policy too, right? Because you can tell them that it takes 90 days for po for password to change, right? So okay. from that, you can tell them. But there's other ways too. You can install a quick script. And the quick script is basically, you, you can search a username in there and then basically it will tell you that this person is either locked out, you can change the password, or it will tell you this many days later, this password, uh, this password will expire, right? Now that's something a little bit more uh, advanced tools that I will show in my other YouTube videos and I'm going to kind of like add it to this training. So this way it's a little bit more complete training. So, so what it is like, we have tools in the company and uh, one of, one of it is called uh, a card examiner, right? So we install that tool on a server and the server checks for uh, uh, expired accounts. So if somebody account is expiring, let's say in two days, they get an email. Hey, your, your, your password is getting expired in two days. You better change your password, right? Mm -hmm. So they, they will get it like two or three times. Then they will get locked and stuff out. But what is, what, is, what, is it, what is the biggest benefit for that? As a help desk, you already have an email for that. If somebody gets locked out, you got an email, right? That's right. So now think about it, how, how uh, nice it is to, for you to know out of 10,000 people, if somebody gets locked out, I'm sure they're not going to know that they got locked out or they got their account is expired. They're going to sit there. They're going to try every single thing. They're going to start calling you and they say, oh, my things are not working. But they will never tell you that my account is locked out because they don't know, right? They're users. Mm -hmm. they're not users. But you as a technician, you looked at it. You got the email. You already know. So what do I call this type of technical skills? What do I call this, tech, uh, this type of IT learning? This is called proactive IT learning. Yes, so you want to be proactive before the things happen. You don't want to be reactive all the time. If you become a reactive IT professional, then it's very few chances for you to move up in this career without stress. You don't want to be stressful IT person, right? That's yes, sir. You're going to have two type of IT people right here. And I, I worked with both of these and I was, I probably am myself too. I was reactive in the beginning because I was learning everything. So I would react to things, right? So my stress level was always high and I was like, man, this job sucks because everybody had issues and all these attitude problems and stuff like that. But then what I learned from other people, I learned that other people are doing something a little bit better than me, right? They were more mm -hmm. proactive IT people. So they were doing what? They were scanning, they were getting emails before things would happen. So, hey, there's an issue coming in, he already fixed it. There's a password got locked out. Somebody called me. Oh, I know your password is locked out. I already unlocked you. Go ahead and enjoy now. So <laughs> you, you want to make it easy for yourself in IT. You don't want to make it hard for yourself. And of okay. course, by training from us, it's kind of like we've been through some of the hard things. So we just transfer the skills to you, right? So it's kind of right. like you already know. In IT, it doesn't work this way. A lot of people would, back in the days would say that, it's better for you to learn it the hard way because then you're going to learn it the, the, the correct way and you're going to learn it because that's how IT works. No, we say that's not a right way. We say that when it, you learn the skills from us, you grab it, you kind of like snatch it from us, you steal it from whatever you want to call it. You grab that and you move on to new skills, right? That's how mm -hmm. you, you don't want to be, I'm going to spend another five years in active directory to try to learn everything hands on and, and like Ali came across an issue and I'm going to try to fix it. You know, you don't want to do that. 
you learn something, you move on. Simple as that, you know? It's, it's like you, you can apply it when you need it. You don't want to just do everything in IT and waste your time by doing every single thing here, okay? Okay. So, guys, I think this is a pretty good, uh, we went above our, our training for almost one hour. I'm not sure, I, I know that we couldn't cover this in, in two hours. <laughs> the thing about this is because, if, you, if I take you guys back, it's our full training is like this, day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, and we cover a lot more things. And then when you go to phase two, it gets even more technical with simulation. That's like self-paced training. But based on our training, we can, like, for example, I was working with you guys now, Jeffrey uh, and the other one, so I can study how you, as, you guys are working. So then I can pick and choose things for you, right, based on how you respond to me. So that's how we do training. So, of course, this is just like a little piece of uh, our main training. So, again, what do you guys think about this training? Very, very, oh, very, very informative. Yeah. Good. Thank you so much. Very good. Thank, thank you. Um, and um, if you guys have any uh, few last questions you want to get, you want like, let's um, put like 10 minutes, last 10 minutes about career or something. Oh. If you guys have any questions, let's just do that. We can ask any question. It doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, well, I did see something that came up in the chat. I don't know who asked. I think someone had asked a question. Are in you able to see that? Oh man, I'm not checking the chat here. Like, uh, sorry, Alexander, and he's not even here anymore. So maybe because this video is recorded, it's going to be on YouTube. So let's see. Is it a best practice to have DNS and AD on the same device, or is, or it has to be separate? So good question. Now. Back in the days, it would it would have been an issue if you were using a pretty like a because people would have hardware right like like you know one hardware for domain controller another hardware for another thing, so that was kind of like an old way. These days, and you, if you guys watch my virtualization training that I put on YouTube, things are so powerful, right? CPUs are so powerful, memory is powerful, and virtualization have changed our IT. Uh, environments and our skills too. It made it easier for us. So now you're going to see, yeah, the DNS will be on the same server, but it's going to have two servers. So D DC1, DC2. DC1 goes down, DC2 is there, right? It can get, you mm -hmm. can make it four. Best practice is usually two, but in some bigger companies, they have four domain controllers. So it, it's uh, very rare that a domain controller will go down. Uh, another question here, I have uh, electricity back out in my back. Okay, so this is just his, he, he's, he's going to uh, join. Okay, any other question? Mm, not really, no. And uh, you guys can use this in your uh, in your uh, resume. If you have the resume, put something that you have done Active Directory training. And people, people are not going to ask you to prove it to me. They're going to say, prove it to me by what is Active Directory? How did you do it? Right? Mm -hmm. So now you can say that, yeah, in a lab environment, we created a domain controller. Remember, in, in an interview, a person is there, you're a human, and then there's another human, right? You're impressing another human, right? That's what you're doing, right? Because they ask you a question, you need to be using terms out there, right? You're going to say domain controller, active directory. A lot of people, they cannot pass through these interview questions. These are people, they just straight come from a college, finish their Network Plus or A Plus, and my platform is full of that. People will come to me and I just ask them a simple question. Can you add a person next to your directory? And they say, what is Active Directory? Now, that's it for me. I'm, why would I hire you if you say that you have a Network Plus certification, which is an advanced certification in my, in my thing is better than A plus. Or if you come and tell me that you have CCNA or if you, have, you tell me that you have MCSA and you cannot answer that question, I'm not going to hire you. Why? Because you went in and you just did A, B, C, D kind of thing and you passed that exam, right? Mm -hmm. So that's not going to work. In, in an interview, if you want to impress somebody, then you say something, even if it's a lab. You say, in a lab environment, we created a domain controller. Then we created this uh, environment where I install our SAT rules. You remember, like you're, you're using these terms now, right? So that is where mm -hmm. you're impressing another person that, okay, now I don't need to go too deep with this person. He already know the basics. I don't, want to, I don't want to ask him about Active Directory anymore. Let's move on to different things. Do you know about imaging? Do you know about deployments? Do you know about this and that? That's the real world stuff that we teach, okay? Okay. Awesome. So now, if you guys don't have any other questions, so make sure you visit the YouTube channel, which I started a new training there. And that's another powerful training is a virtualization training. Make sure you watch that. That's a pretty good uh, yeah. 
And if you guys, if you guys go to the website, jobscoachshare.org, then we also have a full help desk, 80 hours of content for free. So if you guys didn't know, you guys can actually take that course as a free course. So make sure you guys uh, uh, take benefit out of this, okay? Awesome. Awesome. Right. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. So if there's no other question, <laughs> all right, let's end it. And thank you for joining us. I know it's your time too. I appreciate that you guys gave us so much time and uh, also everybody else. So I will put this video on YouTube so you guys can go ahead and revise it. And this lab will be available for you for a few more hours, like four or five hours. You guys can play around if you want to. After okay. four, four or five hours, this is going to get this. Okay. All right. Thank you very thank much. You. Have a good night. All right. Thank you so much. Take care. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you.